Why was the word chosen to symbolize the Holocaust, zachor, remember? Why not nekama, revenge, or avenge? Why gather here at Auschwitz Birkenau, this vast, unprecedented mass murder machine, and these fields drenched with the blood of millions? Why at this place that witnessed the most blatant acts of evil, barbarism, and inhumanity? We remember not to get lost in history, not to dwell on past tragedies and sorrows, nor to exploit them, but to learn their lessons in order to spare future generations such horrors. Zichira, remembrance, enables us to identify the positive and negative lessons and teach them to subsequent generation. The Torah admonishes us to choose life. Our forefathers and foremothers were urged to choose life not just for themselves, but for their children and future generations. So that you and your children and your children's children will live. When God instructed Abraham to bring his beloved son Isaac to be sacrificed at Hara Moriah, he did not want the act to be carried out. God wanted the progenitors of the Jewish people to know what it was important to live for, not die for. Remembrance is a key part of choosing life. We make choices of life every day, but are rarely conscious of them. Learning the lessons of the past helps us make us aware of the importance of the choices and decisions we make. Winston Churchill once said, the further back you look, the further ahead you will see. Our sages taught this lesson thousands of years earlier. We look back in order to look forward. For us, remembrance is about the future. Zechira, remembrance is a dynamic process for it enables us to discern both the causes and the consequences of past events. The great mitzvot commandments are presented in the Torah in this context of zechira, of remembrance. Remember the Shabbat and keep it holy, zechor et yom Shabbat. We are also instructed to remember the exodus from Egypt, the seminal event in the creation of the Jewish nation. Remembrance assures that we will not forget them and their significance. Sha'alo v'yichav v'yagetcha z'chenecha v'yomrulach. The Torah teaches us to look to our parents and grandparents to previous generations when we are in doubt, for they represent the wisdom of the ages and the imperative lessons of the past. Too many here and elsewhere, including me, could not ask our grandparents, and others here, not even their parents, because of what occurred in this terrible place. Virtually a generation was removed so we, young and old alike, come to this frightening yet sacred place to ask, to understand, to learn about then and what it means now. But we do so as a march of the living to extol, to safeguard, and to sanctify life. Listen carefully, especially the young people. Listen carefully. They speak to us from the cold ovens, the empty barracks, the rubble of the crematoria. They remind us, you, of our obligations and responsibilities today. They warn us not to become complacent. They urge us to be aware. They demand that we pass on the message to future generations. Regrettably, we live in a generation of forgetfulness and ignorance of the past that enables people to fall victim to the lies, distortions, revisionism, and even denial that this place ever happened. The goal of the Nazis and their supporters and allies was genocide the elimination of an entire people only because they were Jews. They wanted to erase every trace of our existence and implemented plans to do so with little resistance from the so-called civilized world. As Eloise El said, not all victims were Jews, but all Jews were victims. So today we remember those who savagely murdered and brutally massacred or manned the killing machines here that took millions of innocent lives. We also remember those who aided and abetted them, the neighbors, religious leaders, academics, diplomats, officials, teachers, journalists, all who assisted the terrible deeds by their actions or inaction. Reverend Martin Luther King said, we will not be judged by the acts of our enemies, but by the silence of our friends. We remember those all too few courageous souls who risk or even paid with their lives to save Jews, the righteous amongst the nations, and we remember the liberating troops who freed the remnant of European Jewry. We remember them with eternal gratitude. 
We remember the loss of six million Jews and the destruction of their vibrant culture and communities, their learned scholars, the countless institutions, their suffering and creativity, their endurance and bravery in the face of an institutionalized effort to eradicate them. We remember the courageous resistance fighters, the refusal to succumb, the heroism of individuals and groups, young and old, and their humanity in the face of the most extreme inhumanity. We can remember because of the courageous efforts and foresight of those in the hell of the camps and ghettos who recorded the events. Even today, they bear witness, even in their deaths. They inform, remind, and arouse us until today and for future generations. We thank the survivors who teach us even now. They are a most precious resource their words and warnings guide us. Young people here help sustain their message, meet them, record them, convey their lives and experience to your contemporaries so it will never be forgotten. We remember in order to learn the lessons that it is we who must determine our future, not our enemies. We set the standard for them by what we are willing to tolerate. At a time when we are again hearing and seeing the concocted charges the modern-day blood libels against the Jewish people and Jewish state, we must renew the pledge never again to those who demonize, denigrate, or seek to deny and delegitimize the state of Israel or to deny the Jewish people their rights, those accorded to all others. We say never again. No more blaming the victim to exonerate the perpetrator. And today on this Yom HaShoah, we can truly say to Osama bin Laden, Never again. The ultimate obscenity that when Israel defends human life, it is compared to the Nazis' destruction of all that was decent. Today, they use the most modern technology to spread the most ancient of hatreds. We see the blatant big lies once again, except now they are spread by satellite and the internet to hundreds of millions instantly. And even when the lies are proven false, they continue to be fostered in the media, in United Nations bodies, and academic institutions. So just as we look back, and just those of 70 years ago, so we will be held to account. They said then that they did not know. We know it was a lie. They did not want to know. The facts were clear. They are clear today as well. The stakes are high and we will all be held to account. So I ask you to join me today and from today on to pledge that again, that never again will we allow the Jewish people or Israel to be maligned, condemned, or threatened. That we will speak up loudly, proudly, and act decisively. Never again is not and cannot be a hollow slogan. It is a sacred pledge that each generation must renew with that total commitment. We pledge never to be silent or apathetic, not to be intimidated or cowed. We will speak out for Jewish communities that are threatened anywhere and everywhere, as well as for others suffering persecution. From Darfur to Tehran, from Steyrot to Itamar, our voices will and must be heard. Indifference to human suffering knows no boundaries. Indifference to others will lead to indifference for, towards us. So please, especially the young people here, renew the pledge now, here at Auschwitz-Birkenau. Let our voices be here heard. Never again, never again that you take the promise, gedenk, remember, zachar, and never, ever forget.